Well, good afternoon and welcome to Overdevast Nurseries. It's a beautiful day in very early spring. It's a nice temperature, the sun shining, and it's just great to be able to be outside and to be here in one of our trial and testing gardens. This is where we evaluate varieties to see how they measure up to conventional varieties and to make sure that they do well here in this region. That's the mid-Atlantic and northeastern states of the US. Now here on this channel, we get a lot of questions and comments and people kindly responding to some of the things they see in the videos. And a couple of weeks ago, we got a question in from one of our viewers asking about the propagation of the new hybrid varieties of coneflowers, botanically echinacea, several of which we feature here on this channel. And if you want to find out about all of the brilliant colors and types, I'd invite you to look through that channel and then you'll be able to perhaps pick the ones that appeal to you most. And what I would say also is that if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, can I suggest that now might be a good time to do so because we're publishing new videos all the time. And also, of course, if you like some of the things that we're telling you, you find it helpful and informative, it would be really great if you could kindly click the like button too because then of course that helps to make the information available for other people as well. So here in front of me I have a little planting of one of those varieties and here as you see they're totally dormant. They're just beginning to come through now in springtime. They have the remains of some of the old seed heads here. Little birds have been feeding on the seed. They're valuable for that because they help to sustain sustain those little birds but now it's the time to go in and to trim them back and also to divide them because you see varieties like this do not come true from seed and the only way that you can propagate them is by division and also it's important to be able to do that about every three or four years because that means that not only do you get more plants but it also means that the varieties are often longer lived too and that's because you see when a clump is growing in the one position for a long time, the roots, the shoots all get congested. It begins to run out of steam. And by dividing a plant and splitting it apart, you're helping to keep it young and juvenile and more growthy and therefore longer lived. So the first thing to do is to just really go in and cut these stems back at the base of the plant. Just trim off all of this material it's all dead, it's all finished. These are the remains of the stems and the flowers from last year. So you really just go in and trim all of these back, right back to the base, because there's nothing alive here on the tops of the plants. So after you've trimmed off all of the old foliage, then the next thing is to go in and give it a rake over to rake up any debris that's on there. But there's one other thing I wanted to show you that's really very important now at this time of year in early spring. And that is that you get on top of any weeds. If you can get rid of weeds that are on your beds at the start of the season, before they grow out and set seed themselves, you'll save yourself a lot of work in the long run. So if there's one thing that's very important when you're going through and doing your spring cleanups in your bed is certainly get rid of any weeds that you might be on the bed. The smaller you can get them, the better. But as I say, the next thing to do is to rake up any of the debris old pieces of stems, leaves, anything that might be here on the beds, just rake that up because that old foliage that's there can become a source of reinfection. So starting out nice and clean at the start of the year will definitely pay dividends. So just rake that up and then start out nice and clean. Then the next thing to do is to rake back or shovel back, if you have a lot of it, 
the mulch from round about the crown. This will come in handy later on and if you just, like I'm doing with the shovel here now, just remove that mulch around the perimeter of the clump and then perhaps just finish off with a rake and just rake that around so that as you see what's left now is the clump. That is they say, <laughs> we'll let the dog see the rabbit. <laughs> Then the next thing to do is to dig around the perimeter of the clump. You can tell by the various shoots that are coming up just how big the clump is. It depends on the vigour of the variety and how long the plants have been down there. I like to split them about every three to four years, though this isn't a hard and fast rule. You can probably do it every five to six years, and in fact there's been occasions where in my own garden I've forgotten or not got around to it and I've left them longer. And then when you lift the clump up like this, you'll see that you have the whole clump up out of the ground and you're ready to work on it. So then with your fingers, just work your way around the clump, break off any of the loose soil that's around the clump like this. You'll see already the fleshy roots of the cone flowers are beginning to come out of the clump here and oh yes look here you see just here from underneath the ground the first purplish little red buds are beginning to come out of the crown this is the indication that the plants are just beginning to think about growing out in springtime and that shows that this is the perfect time to do it because the plants are just beginning to wake up they're just beginning to grow and <laughs> I remember that many years ago when I was a kid the old timers taught me old timers like my like I am now <laughs> said that the perfect time to divide plants is when the buds are the size of a mouse's ear <laughs> that's not very big <laughs> So now that we can see more of the clump and the buds starting to come through from the clump, I'm just going to remove a little bit more of these old dead stems here so that I get a better idea of what I'm dealing with. And by just working this off the top, you can begin to understand or at least see where the possibilities might be of dividing it. Now, some plants when you're dividing them you can work your thumb and you can begin to split them apart with your thumb some plants come apart really quite easily but with cone flowers i find that i'm able to split them better with a sharp knife one like this that has a nice point on it because then you're able to push in with a knife and slice down through the middle of the root ball like i'm doing now and then when you're doing that, you'll be able to slice down through with the knife, pull the clump apart, and as you see, now we have two nice crowns. Here's one with lots of nice strong buds breaking out from the center of it there, and look at this one, the same. We've got lots of growth there coming out. Now sometimes, you could try and split them again and turn one plant into four but i think it's better probably just to stick with two clumps here and now i'll show you what the next stage is and that is to prepare the new planting position for your new plants so i'm just backfilling the hole that the original clump came out of here and then just basically prepare new two new planting positions for your new plants and if you're wondering how to do that there's a video here on this channel that will take you through the stages of how to plant a perennial if you follow those directions that'll probably give you the basis of what to do and now fast forward I've uh, dug, as you see, two holes that are about 18 inches or two foot apart, bearing in mind where the other existing clumps are, 
and I'm just going to put them back in this bed to be near with the ones that are there already though you could of course put these in a completely new bed the important thing is to dig a good generous sized hole break it up in the bottom make sure that the site you put it in is free draining that's very important because the fleshy roots on coneflowers do not like to be in wet soil so open a good generous sized hole and then the next thing is to get some organic matter in this case planting compost and you can put that into the base of the hole and also on the backfill and then work it in to the soil just dig it up in the bottom of the hole and work that in make sure that you get it well mixed in in both holes like so and the same with this one and then when you've got it nicely mixed up in the base of both holes now comes the time to replant your clumps and as you see it's just really a matter of positioning this in the center of the hole about the same height or if anything slightly proud of the existing level of the soil that's there now one of the little tips i have is that i like to set them up a little higher than the surrounding ground the reason for that as i mentioned earlier is that coneflowers just do not like to be on wet sticky conditions so as you backfill now you can take that soil and mix it in with the planting compost just work it right in to where the planting pit is if you're wondering at home whether your soil is a little too damp or it could be that it's really well drained in which case that will be ideal but if you're wondering whether it's going to be free draining or not then you can always get in underneath and you can raise the clump up a little bit like I'm doing here now and just firm the soil and the mixture of planting compost around it and then just firm it in gently with your feet I'll make sure that the roots are in good contact with the newly backfilled soil then as you see as you just firm it around with your feet like I'm doing here you're creating a little kind of reservoir a little well a place that even though it's springtime and there's plenty of moisture in the ground it's worth just taking a few minutes and then watering each of the clumps and giving them a good soak because that will then help to settle down the soil particles around the new clump it will also help the clump get off to a good start and then the last thing to do is to rake back or apply new mulch and then of course as you do that you can look forward to having more of your cone flowers growing away flowering you'll have even more plants but more importantly than that you'll also have young healthy vigorous plants that will keep going for many years so there you are as you see the two clumps are now sitting nice and proud lots of young bright red buds poking out of the ground and in no time at all these will be up and growing and flowering and putting on a terrific show so that's how you can propagate these hybrid cone flowers now one thing I should mention is that when you look at the descriptions and on the tags of plants you'll see a plant patent and therefore while it's illegal to propagate patented plants like this 
that's really I think intended for wholesale growers for people who are going to be producing them for commercial reasons and I don't think anybody's going to worry too much about you splitting one or two plants in your own home garden and if there's one thing that I want to reinforce out of all of this video and that is that when you're growing these cone flowers make sure that they are grown in really good free draining conditions in fact now when I think about it in my own garden over 15 years ago when I was planting at that time a new variety one called pink double delight a gorgeous plant I remember putting the spade in the ground and after it went down about four or five inches I hit gravel and I remember thinking I wonder will they do in all of this gravel well of course I excavated a good hole I put in some planting compost I did everything like I was just showing you and guess what they of course grew away beautifully and now I've split them several times over I now have nice big clumps of that gorgeous variety and as you scroll through our videos here on this channel I think you'll see all of the possibilities all of the gorgeous varieties that you can grow and enjoy having in your garden too this is David Wilson enjoy your gardening it's good for us and it's very good for our environment as well